Good morning fellow Utopians and welcome to Utopia Farms. It's extremely windy today but for the moment the sun is shining. Apparently today we're supposed to get uh, rain coming in again and then we're gonna go into those brutally cold temperatures. So uh, we'll take the warmth while we can this morning and uh, we'll head towards the barn and see what's gonna happen in here today. Now we're in the weaned uh, lamb group in the ewe lamb section which we have now it's all our Suffolk ewe lambs from the first and second group which are basically our January ewe lambs and they're all separated here that's the Dorset mums on the other side. You can see the difference in uh, how much higher those ewes are on the other side because the manure wasn't removed from that side. And on this side, we cleaned it all out. And then on the other side of the dividing wall and the chute are the ram lambs. And the ram lambs have some Dorsets in there as well. And uh, we have to sort through them and pick out uh, the rams that we think are potential breeders. Uh. And these are the ewe lambs. So um, the oldest ewe in here would be about a month older than the youngest ewe. So that's the age range. And usually, uh, with Suffolk especially, who are gaining upwards of a pound a day, um, 30 days can make a big difference. So you can pretty well guarantee that the smaller of these ewes would be the younger ewe lambs. But they're all within the same age range. And looking at length, You can see they're pretty even when you go down the rumps. So we got the length pretty worked out. And then you'd be looking at width. Ram, ram same thing. Except ram, the rams, there'll be a little more variation because there are dorsets in the group and Dorsets will tend to be a little bit smaller. They catch up eventually, but that's where you'll see a little discrepancy. There's my number three. Second one in there, and actually that's number 15, a Dorset Ram. Those two I'm liking quite a bit. So here's little Kevin, and I thought today I might try to give him a little face trimming. His wool is good, but he does have a little bit of fluff around his face. So I thought he might like it if he was a little prettier. So we got the scissors. I don't know if he's gonna wanna stand there for that. But um, I don't know if you remember number nine, uh, the Dorset Ram that was my favorite in this group and um, and he had a fluffy face and I said that was the only thing I didn't like about him well here's number nine here he's the third one in there and I'm liking and look at his face hey buddy hey can we see your face he was like a total woolly face before and now look it's all come off and I swear to God I didn't uh, take the scissors to him. So um, I guess I guess the moral of that is wait till they grow a little bit because I know with Suffolk's too, they can get little tufts on their head when they're babies. And then as they mature, it's kind of like peach fuzz, you know? Uh, it, it just comes off. So I, I'm actually really happy that uh, that's come off number nine because I like him a lot. And that was the problem I was having with them. Like, this guy's got a nice face too here. 
But Kevin, he's a little wooly, so we're gonna give him a, him a trim. Okay, so there's Kevin. Now with his nice hairdo. Kevin, let's see your face. Let's see your face, Kevin. I know the minerals are important. There, you look like a dice door set. So I've been running around the, the ram pen, the Suffolk Wien rams, um, just uh, looking at ones that I think are pretty nice and then scanning them with my reader to see if they're a registered sheep or who they are and get a feeling from uh, like uh, it tells me exactly how old they are, how many days who the dad is, who the mom is, if they're registered or not, uh, and if it's a single, twin, triplet, whatever. Then I've been writing down the ones that I liked, and I want to pick out like 10 max, and I haven't been in here too long, and already my list is getting crazy. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's good to have so many good rams but it's so hard um, to pick because I'm trying to find the best of the best. So I'm like, uh, some people go by numbers that are generated by a computer. They'll uh, crunch the numbers by uh, doing his birth weight and how many days old he is and um, whether he's a single twin triplet. Same thing I do, except they're going to be crunching those uh, weight numbers from birth till now. We've done um, general weights on these, so I pretty well know the weights of these guys. And I do have all that other information. And all of these guys are hitting weight criteria. It's not an issue for us. But because it's breeding stock, um, confirmation is extremely important to me. And uh, I like the width of our sheep, and I, I want good legs, I want a good back, I want a Suffolk to look like a Suffolk. So um, I'm looking for all of those traits. Um, just weights and, and birth order really doesn't do it for me. Like I can figure that out real easy. So I'm going around looking at them, and... I kind of thought that I was going to have a lot of handsome on my list, but I'm being overwhelmed by uh, one ram in the Suffolk group. I haven't done them all because uh, now I started videotaping just to tell you what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go get a spray marker because I've written them down, but I'm going to forget who they are when we run them through the chute. Arnie likes to run them through the chute and judge them that way by how well they uh, fill out the chute, but I can't see their testicles, their legs and all that in the chute. So I like to come in before Arnie comes and runs them through the chute and have my list and uh, see how they do when they hit the chute. Um, I haven't checked that 85 yet. I'm pretty sure he's from Handsome. I liked him uh, in the beginning as a lamb He's right here. I still like him, but I don't know if I like him as much as some of the others. So, I'm hard, hard, hard on our sheep. I would love to keep them all and sell them all, but I cannot do that. There just isn't a market for this many sheep. So, that's when I gotta be tough and find out who I really like. But, the ram I'm seeing a lot of. See that? The Sheriff and Hamish, those are Dorsets. But if we're looking at Suffolk so far, I got glad, 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 handsome, handsome. Uh, way more glads than I thought. And look at these guys. We have the shoot here, and they've all loaded themselves, and actually, one of these rams, I did want to check him because I thought he was looking nice. Nah. 
so normally uh, we go by, just by confirmation so but we've got so many good rams that now unfortunately uh, grade rams are probably not gonna make the cut just because I can't register them um, on other years they do because most people don't care about the papers but um, yeah I'm thinking probably I'm gonna lean towards the registered this year unless it's a humdinger so we're gonna scan his tag and that tells me see this one's a grade but he's a he's one that I've been looking at see how wide he is he's filling that shoot up he's 108 days and he's a twin he's a grade he's still a purebred Suffolk um, but somewhere down the line we couldn't we couldn't register him um, we did uh, we did drop registrations on some ewes, so it's probably from one of those ewes. But again, Daddy is Gladiator. And who are you? You look very nice. And you tend to, just like in the show ring, you tend to be swayed towards um, the bigger uh, sheep, the bigger rams, you know, the ones, uh, because they stand out, they've got... Uh, so much presence um, that they can overshadow a younger or smaller ram who may be equally or even better on confirmation. And uh, I got 79 there. That's from Handsome. Still like him. He's going to stay. But I'm looking at this dude here who's a little smaller. Uh, and that guy, too. Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with that guy. There's something wrong with his testicles. I'm guessing he has one swollen testicle, and he's missing the other. So he's a call. He's out. That makes that easy. This guy here, on the other hand, has a fantastic rear end on him. Good testicles, good back. So we're going to breed him. I guess I'm not going to mark anyone yet because I got too many. Come on, buddy. Don't run away. Okay, he's going to go in a trap area now. Katie, get out, please. I can't get out of here so I can scan him. Because the board fell down. There we go. Oh, and look at that. This one's registered. He's also a twin. And you see who the sire is? Well, at least I can say that my ram, the one that I pick, is uh, producing a lot of humdingers in here today. Uh, yeah, now he's making it really hard on me. I'm going to write that guy down to... Hi, number three, because we know you're from GLAD. I'm just going to add that guy down, too, because I don't care about twins and triplets in general. However, if all things are equal, um, if the single is as good as the twin or the twin is as good as the single, whatever, um, I will select, if I have to, I will choose the twin over the single. But otherwise, I'm gonna take whoever's best because there's not much heritability uh, with twins and triplets and stuff. Hi, oh, you're very nice. Who are you? Who are you? You guys are overwhelming me with your niceness. Hi, you are spectacular. You're spectacular. Oh, you can't be. You can't be. That must be number three. No, who are you? Hang on a second. You're 237. Do I have you already on here? Yeah, I do. But you're from Glad too. You're spectacular, honey. Look at that head. See, um, 
And I also want, like I said, the Suffolk traits. Oh, he's gonna go look at my reader. See how his ear curves up? That's that little bell ear. Beautiful ear there. And uh, remember I said that a ram should have a ramier head? Can you see, can you get the feel of how wide and broad that head and neck is and shoulder? A ram needs that, that's their power. That's, uh, that's a really nice head on him. And then also the, the um, extreme delineation between the hair on the head and the wool on the neck. See that there's a, it, the hair comes down and it stops in a straight line. That's also a really good trait. Now, his legs are perfect, his face is perfect. Actually, I'm really, really liking this rim. I'm gonna put a star on him. He's, who did we say you are? 237? This one, he's a single. He's actually 100 days. We can get him on the scale. Oh, and you're nice like your dad too. Now, Everything looks great on him. I don't see any visible faults. Um, I'd have to catch him and check his mouth. Ah, there's your teeth. His teeth are not over. And his wool, that's where I'm gonna be concerned because right here where the wool starts, see it's a little darker, but when I split it, you see it's white. And I see he had a spot here as a lamb. You can see that spot? Just ever so faded now. And I do see that there might be a little slight graying in there. But you know, one little spot for a beauty like you, honey. And I'm pretty well going to overlook that. And I'm going to go get my marker and put a star on him because I haven't really noticed him before, and I don't want to forget which one he is, but you are something special. You are. Yeah, he's. I'm liking he's got that real power ram look to him. And good bone on him. He's standing up on his tippy toes. You see that? Got a good spread. <laughs> oh, this guy was a surprise for me. Uh, he's a ram that is obviously a cross, but um, these guys, uh, these crosses are what the out of season breeders want, or the Dorsets, they don't care if they're crosses usually. Um, but this guy, again, rammy, rammy head, super long, he's one of the longest Dorsety ones in here, and uh. I knew I was topping him up with a bottle, uh, so I knew he was a triplet, and I knew I was going to keep him because he, for a triplet, he's very large. But I, when I scanned him, I found out he was a quad. So when I say I don't put preference over singles and twins and stuff, when I get a quad that's as big as he is. Um, he's definitely going to get star points because uh, he he's uh, that it's quite quite something to be as big as the singles in the pen when you're a quad. Aside from the fact that I have I am admittedly biased towards Gladiator because um, I like him on so many levels. Um, I am very happy that I'm finding a lot of gladiator rams in here though because generally the show group has to come from this pen because at the shows, um, like I said before, the, the bigger ones are the ones that win the show. Um, it's rare that a judge will put a smaller uh, ram over a bigger one. so. Just, just by age, the January lambs are going to be bigger than, say, the March lambs. And judges will ask you, you know, when's he born? And you can say March, and he'll say it's really nice. But it's rare, because um, the argument a judge made, because I did bring a young ram once, and, and he did place really well, but he, 
he said he couldn't um, place him first because with ram lambs, and I've said that before, that's why I encourage people to buy yearlings if they can, ram lambs change as they, as they mature. And all things being well and equal, um, the good ram lamb will turn into the good adult. But it does not always work that way. The slightest um, problem with feed, parasites, um, heat, um, an injury, anything that sets them back uh, can really set their growth back, It's their development. Um, uh, if they get weak, they because of an illness, they can uh, tend to get saggy and bend down, and uh, like it's it, it's not uncommon for a good ram lamb not to look so good when he gets older. So uh, that's why the judges uh, will also pick the older, bigger rams because uh, they're more set. They're him saying that this is the best one probably has a little more weight than a younger one. Are you my 237? Yes. Okay, I got 237 marked. Most of these rams that I'm picking out will be sold to other people. Um, it will be a rare ram that actually stays here. Usually if I have someone like Gladiator who I really like. Um, I, I'm always looking to keep back a son because uh, if something happens to him, I, I want his genetics to carry on. So um, I have no problem holding back a gladiator son. Uh, and what I was saying before I got, uh, I got distracted in talking because I'm just so excited now that, I, that I'm finding some of the best ones are, are from Gladiator. Like, I, I can't think straight. <laughs> but um, a good thing about that is uh, for the show, show ring again this fall, it is uh, a lot more satisfying when you bring in sheep that you can say are sired by your sheep. So um, what I mean by that is Gladiator was born and bred here. So he's a Utopia Ram out of a Utopia U. So um, all his offspring here are also Utopia. So that will show up in the records when people go to say, say oh, what genetics is he? He's totally utopia. Whereas um, if I bring um, number two, which uh, Arnie wants to bring number two to the shows, he's out of Felon, I believe, which is um, a different uh, uh, Felon's a ram we bought in. So people could say, oh, he only did well because that's so and so's ram. You know, um, you hate to say that, but I was showing Shetlands once with a good, uh, with what I thought were really good friends. And after the show, I, like, it was my first show with sheep, and my Shetlands all won. And they had brought in a judge from the United States who was also a veterinarian and a Shetland judge. And uh, she's the one who who did the show and put my sheep first. And that was pretty exciting for me. And they were doing like a, a barn tour uh, with visitors and stuff and other breeders looking at the pens of sheep in the barn. And I was at the back of the group and people didn't, the person talking didn't realize I was there. And they said, yeah, the judge prefers big sheep, and that's why Lynn won. And I thought, you know, yeah, I was really hurt by that. I mean, that, and the person who said that actually arranged to have that judge come up 
from the United States to judge. So, like, I wasn't even involved in that process. I wasn't a friend of hers like he was. And it can get nasty. Like, people... I, I don't know why people are like that, but they, they, if you, if you do well, they want to bring you down. It's, it's, I don't know, it's mean-spirited, and I see it a lot when there's competition, and that is the only thing I don't like about showing. When you go, it is fun, like, the training, the washing. And Kevin, you're gonna go to the show, aren't you? I do want Kevin to go. I think he's awesome. Hello, Kevin. And I thought he was going to be, because um, he's from Hamish, I thought he was going to be with number nine um, from the same dad, in the group with the same dad. But uh, turns out he, he's from Hamish, who is the woolier face one, and you saw me uh, trim uh, Kevin up a little bit. And number nine over there, who we are keeping to, and I want to show him, who's got a little patch missing off his shoulder there. He's lost the wool off his face. And I thought he was Hamish too. And I thought, oh, we'll keep him and replace his dad with him. But when I just scanned him this afternoon, he's actually from Sheriff. So yeah, it's hard to keep track of who's who. So that's why um, once they get this age and we have to start selecting, then I bring out my scanner and I spend a lot of time in the barn trying to sort out who's who uh, for the show ring because uh, we haven't shown for two years now because of COVID and it's fun. I, I like the whole thing. Uh, it's not about uh, anything except having having fun, loading them up on the trailer and going for a trip and getting away from the farm and talking to a whole bunch of people. Anyway, I think I'm going to turn this off now and go in the house for a little while because uh, it's getting really really spooky scary out there so um, I'm gonna pack up my stuff and head over to the main barn and then we'll head back home okay I'm gonna push against this wind and put the lid back on my bird feeder which I see blew off and I see there's other stuff around the yard too that's been blowing around. The rain hasn't come yet, but this wind is pretty wicked. So I'm going to head back in. I don't know if I accomplished too much with uh, picking rams today. I got uh, a list and we're going to go through it again and again in the next couple of days because Ernie wants to go to the sales barn on Monday. So I got to make sure any that I really like are not on that trailer. Well, we're going to call her a day. And I hope you'll join us again next time for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.